टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन द मास्टरिंग बुक सिंगल बेस्ट आंसर एंड क्वेश्चन फॉर एम आर सी जी पार्ट टू एग्जामिनेशन दिस इज वेरी ऑथेंटिक बुक एंड वेरी वैल्यूएबल सोर्स फॉर एम आर सी जी पार्ट टू एग्जाम प्रिपरेशन एंड द ऑथर्स ऑफ दिस बुक इंक्लूड एडल अल कैडे बशीर जाउलथे एंड मुस्तफ़ा एच अहमद एंड अलेक्जेंडर ई रईस सो लेट इज स्टार्ट दिस बुक now we are starting this book from the chapter 1 early pregnancy so uh, let us start the first question so the question number 1 says that a woman uh, who is 9 weeks pregnant comes to the early pregnancy assessment units complaining of the severe nausea and uh, occasional vomiting she is not keen on the drug therapy what would you advise drink decaffeinated co- coffee drink ginger syrup drink herbal tea and take a long bra- break from the work and take up yoga okay so we have to find the answer now if we check the rcg guideline about hyperemesis gravidarum we can see that there is specific emphasis about the use of the ginger um, ginger which complementary therapy is useful for hyperemesis gravidarum is written that ginger may be used for women wishing to avoid antiemetic therapy in mild to moderate nausea vomiting in pregnancy okay so i think the answer of this question would be uh, ginger so here the answer would be uh, b uh, drink ginger syrup now coming to question number 2 of mastering chapter 1 uh, question number 2 a 33 years old woman gravid 3 para 2 comes to emergency department complaining of excessive vomiting for the last 3 days she is otherwise asymptomatic with a normal past medical history she is admitted and her thyroid function test showed a uh, low thyroid stimulating levels and raised free t4 level what is the most important feature to differentiate transient hyperthyroidism of hyperemesis gravidarum from hyperthyroidism okay so we have different options like absence of the uh, current clinical sign and symptom of hyperthyroidism absence of the clinical history of hyperthyroidism absence of the enlarged thyroid gland negative thyroid receptor antibody site and normal tsh and t4 in a repeat thyroid function test so now we have to uh, uh, find the answer of this question now if we study the um, hypermesis gravidarum guideline rcg guideline we we will uh, find that no, uh, nausea vomiting pregnancy hypermesis gravidarum are both associated with hyponatremia uh, hypokalemia low um, serum urea and raised hematocrit and ketonuria, uh, ketonuria with metabolic hypochloremic alkalosis okay so the thing which um, uh, i was uh, trying to find out is that that in two third of the patient with hypermesis there may be abnormal thyroid function test based upon the structural similarity between the tsh and scg with a biochemical thyrotoxicosis and raised free thyroxine with or without a suppressed thyroid stimulating hormone level these patient rarely have thyroid antibodies and are u thyroid clinically okay so remember this point that these patient rarely have thyroid antibodies and are u thyroid clinically so this was what i was trying to find out so in this question number 2 the answer would then be uh, d negative thyroid receptor antibody so that is our answer now question number 3 i am um, mastering i am asking you to chapter number 1 question number 3 a primary gravida who is 10 weeks pregnant is complaining of the slight vaginal bleeding and occasional abdominal colic ultrasound showed a live single ten pregnancy corresponding to her menstrual period she is worried about losing this pregnancy and ask for any medication to help with the pregnancy she has read something about the progesterone therapy how will you counsel her okay we have option a she can start oral progesterone therapy she can start a combination of the oral and vaginal progesterone as it is more effective than the single therapy she should start a combination therapy if she gets uh, severe colic and there is no, no strong evidence to recommend the use of any progesterone therapy vaginal progesterone is more effective to treat threatened miscarriage so let us find the answer of this now this question is very controversial in uh, mastering although the answer is written that there is no uh, strong evidence to recommend the use of any progesterone therapy uh, but that was uh, taken basically from the uh, nice 2012 guidelines and uh, recent recommendation from rcog is that it uh, is of uh, a little bit help in um, um in threatened miscarriages 
so um, to me the answer would be e although in the book uh, mastering book d is written but to me the e is the most probable answer now coming to the next question question number four chapter one uh, mastering um, a 20 years old uh, woman who is nine weeks um, in her first pregnancy has just had complete miscarriage she is distressed and very uh, tearful and you have explained that the miscarriage does not affect her future fertility her partner is worried her anxiety may persist and may be a uh, possible cause of delayed pregnancy what else will you tell them um, her anxiety will go away when she misses her next period or her anxiety will persist until she achieves um, another pregnancy and her anxiety will continue until she has healthy baby her anxiety will most uh, likely disappear in around four months when she gets uh, over it and she should be referred to psych a psychiatrist so we need to find the answer now the answer of this question is d her anxiety will most likely disappear in around four months when she gets over it uh, in fact the available studies suggest that 30 to 50 percent of miscarriages cases uh, experience anxiety symptom and 10 to 15 percent experience depressive symptoms which commonly persist for up to four months okay so the answer here would uh, be d next question is question number five a woman who is 11 plus um, three weeks pregnant complained of abdominal colic and attack of the brisk vaginal bleeding a repeat ultrasound confirmed fetal demise and you diagnosed inevitable miscarriage and uh, she is um, considering expectant management how will you counsel her arrange for expectant management in the hospital setting as she is under the high risk of the bleeding agrees that expectant management is her best option explain that she is at uh, high risk of the bleeding recommended surgical management as she is at high risk of the bleeding wait for 14 days before you recommend other options so let's find the answer the answer of this question is um, C that is explain that she is at high risk of the bleeding and you must explain the patient's wishes and offer different options but do not recommend any specific treatment if there are no contraindication to various other treatment options so option here is C so question number six of chapter one mastering um, a woman who is 11 weeks pregnant with a confirmed miscarriage was very hesitant in deciding on the medical or surgical management she was still keen on avoiding the anesthetic and the surgical risk if possible what will you tell her about the chances of not having surgery if she opts for the medical management a it avoids the need for surgery in 30 percent of the woman it avoids the need for surgery in over 50 percent 40 percent of the woman it avoids the need for surgery in over 50 percent of the woman it avoids the need for surgery in over 60 percent of the woman it avoids the need for surgery in over 70 percent of the moment so let us find the answer of this question now evidences show that it avoids the need for surgery in over 70 percent okay so that would be the answer answer e question number seven mastering chapter one a 20 years old woman comes to early pregnancy assessment unit at seven plus six weeks uh, amenorrhea and mild to moderate vaginal bleeding and with occasional abdominal pain she had positive pregnancy test but refuses a transvaginal ultrasound scan you will um, how will you handle this situation ask the consultant to talk to her ask her to sign the form that she refused the medical advice refer her to radio department for a scan in the earliest available appointment respect her wishes but explain the limitation of trans abdominal versus the transvaginal ultrasound scan and send her back to the general practitioner so now we have to think about this question now the answer to this question is d respect her wishes but explain the limitation of trans abdominal versus the transvaginal scan okay uh, although this patient refused to have the transvaginal scan um, we we uh, we have to follow whatever the patient says but at the same time we will tell her about the limitation that tvs is very superior in uh, a lot of cases like an obese patient or in women with a retroverted uterus um, and also it bypasses obstacles such as bone gas filled bowel and extensive pelvic adhesion so in many cases the tbs has superiority over das so uh, although we have to respect the wishes of the patient we have, but we have to tell about the limitation so that is the most probable answer of this bismillahirrahmanirrahim today we will start discussion on the mastering